Hello everyone, big news. Uh, my fourth book has dropped today. You would have seen the cover in the thumbnail for this video, but here it is again. So the title is Illuminism, Foundation and Lifestyle, a guide to the religious pursuit of the form of the good in ontological mathematics, or why is there something rather than nothing answered? So in this book, I give a summary of the foundation, which is basically based on the videos that I've done already on this channel. Uh, just this sort of summary, a condensed, maximally condensed, uh, as condensed as possible uh, discussion or explanation or uh, primer uh, of, on ontological math mathematics, of ontological mathematics, how it works, how it is the theory of everything, how it explains uh, existence, how it's a grand unified theory of everything, uh, uniting, uh, you know, which is the, the foundation of all knowledge going forward, grand unified theory of everything. And so one of the things which I do in this book is I give you a, a schematic, a diagram of what your very own soul looks like. So I'll show you that here for fun. So remember, what is the base unit of existence? What is the fundamental basis unit of existence? It is the circling, right? So here uh, at this part of the book, I just show you why a circle uh, amounts to nothing. Uh, just getting that idea across, it's because, you know, every point um, on the opposite side of the circle sort of cancel each other out to nothing, and that's basically... Uh, giving you, when you combine that with movement, it gives you uh, something from nothing. So here you have the, this would be the point here, that little arrow, and it goes around the circle. So that's how you get something from nothing. It's a net nothing. Okay, so that is a single circle. But of course, uh, you apply the infinity multiplier, and it ends up that you have uh, sets of circlings uh, that are arranged into monads. And so this is basically what your monad looks like what your soul looks like this is a diagram of your soul so these are the low frequencies way out here the large circles and on the very inside those would be the highest frequencies and of course there's a black dot in the middle that's just to indicate that you know the frequencies are getting you know very very tight together and they all sort of just sort of merge uh into one uh just because of the spacing issue there's no actual dot there at your center uh, it's just, you know, frequencies going all the way down to whatever ontological limit. Uh, there would be numerical limit uh, to the highest possible frequency. Anyway, the human component is these largest frequencies out here. Um, just here, I can just show that you would apply the infinity multiplier to monads as well and just show, you know, 16 monads side by side. In fact, all of this exists in the mental singularity. So all these monads, you know, and there'd be an infinite number of these, just like there's an infinite number of circlings within each monad, uh, then there's an infinite number of monads. And so these all actually exist just in a mental, mental singularity, um, all on top of each other. Or you could think of them as creating a, a plenum, um, a numerical plenum. Uh, there's there wouldn't be gaps like this in between them. I'm just sort of showing them all sort of stacked beside each other. Uh, there's no gaps like that in reality. I'm just showing it schematically what an infinite number of them would look like. They in fact all exist on top of each other, and the only thing that differentiates them is uh, some sort of numerical uh, coordinate, I guess, uh, coordinate in in the mental singularity space. Um, but then going further down here, I have a section on religion. And so here is, again, your monad, a, a diagram of your monad. And so you see this dashed line here? So this dashed line would be the frequency at which the human components of your monad um, are differentiated from, your, uh, from, from the non-corporeal components. So only these outer frequencies, these lowest frequencies are the frequencies which get scrambled into the space-time domain and undergo the process of becoming of uh, which is you know the process of the reorganization of these thoughts of these frequencies into perfection right um, at higher frequencies and you know you could think of this as the basic hermetic seal you know that term the hermetic seal the perfect seal that's basically what this frequency is there's some transition at which at which it transforms uh, or at which frequencies, high frequencies, cannot be expressed in space-time. And so, in fact, these components on the inside of that seal, that's your subconscious. It's your subconscious, it's also the universal subconscious. It also would connect to whatever other um, uh, um, collective subconsciousnesses exist out there. Um, but an interesting thing about, an interesting extrapolation would be that it's the low frequencies out here which become deorthogonalized and which create space-time and matter 
and which also create you and your body. And these are the frequencies which you experience in space-time, these low frequencies, right? Those are the ones that get disorganized. So um, it would follow then that these frequencies inside the hermetic seal, where your subconsciousness resides, where the universal consciousness resides, are in fact not the ones which would be scrambled and deorthogonalized. So that means that these ones inside are perfectly organized. And if they're perfectly organized thoughts, well then, then what does that mean? That means that they are, you know, the fully conscious God. Of course, we call it the sub subconscious. And of course, in the books, they eventually call it differently conscious, because in fact, this thing is so brilliant, this inside, this interior <clears throat> of the hermetic seal, which is your subconsciousness, it's actually so incredibly intelligent that it is what moves your body. It is what transforms a flower into an apple on the tree. It is what, uh, you know, that just that idea of moving your body. Do you understand how incredibly complex it would be to run your body, to manage your heartbeats, to, you know, coordinate your balance and fire off all the, you know, muscle fibers that you specifically need? I mean, that would take a godlike intelligence to run that. I mean, if you were to start making a list rationally and with your conscious mind of how to do that, well, you would never end and you would never even know how to do it. You wouldn't even get all the, even once you wrote down the list of what you all had to do, you still wouldn't be able to do it. You still wouldn't know how to actually make it happen, right? But your subconscious mind, which is basically your God mind, uh, does that because it would require a God level of consciousness to, to do that. So we call it the subconscious, but in fact, it is sort of the interior infinite intelligence inside of all of us. And, and I think I make, yeah, well, of course, I know that I make a remark in the book that, um, you know, the philosopher's stone, uh, the powder of the alchemists, you know, all those sort of ideas, it's about dissolving this hermetic seal so that your frequencies, your disorganized frequencies out here become unified with the organized frequencies inside that's creating a whole God out of you, right? A complete God. So anyway, that is a schematic of what your soul looks like. This is you these largest frequencies out here on the outside of the monad, the very outside, the very largest frequencies. Then there's a sort of a hermetic seal where it transforms from the frequencies which can be expressed in space-time, which would include your body and your consciousness here in space-time. Uh, it goes to the subconscious, to the mental singularity, uh, the interior. And you know, the, this, this schematic like this shows, uh, it, it graphically demonstrates that concept that, you know, the Christ is within, right? That God is within you. God is literally within you, literally. You are these outer low frequency circlings. That's what you are. And God is inside of those, literally, because they're higher frequency. Um, everything that constitutes what you would call God, your subconscious mind, are these smaller circlings, these higher frequency circlings. They're literally inside you, right? So, I mean, it, it's literal. I mean, we can literally draw draw that now with ontological mathematics that God is within you. God is not outside you, right? God is literally within you. Okay, so that is in my book. So I hope you guys take a look at it. And I discuss a lot of other stuff about lifestyle, about what you should do to take care of your body, take care of your mind. Um, a lot of important stuff like that, dealing with society, dealing with how we're being poisoned. Oh, yes, and I discuss, you know, this idea of this uh, foreign collective subconsciousness, which seems to be not native to planet Earth and has, you know, designs and plans for what it's trying to affect and how I discovered this through uh, this problem of climate alarmism and scientific materialism. Really fascinating read. <clears throat> At least it was fascinating to me to write it. I even discovered some of these concepts or uh, I just, you know, made them more clear to myself in writing it. Anyway, a lot of fun. I'll stop rambling. So um, have a good night, you guys. Have a good day, week, whatever you're doing. And uh, please pick up the book. And maybe in a week or two, I'll do a live stream once, you know, it seems maybe a few people have read it. I'll give people a few weeks or a month to read it. And then I can do a live stream and we can discuss uh, some of the concepts from the book, if you like. How fun would that be? It would be fun for me. I hope it would be fun for you too. Okay. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.